I'm an environmental justice advocate. I'm also an architect and a poet. Um, my work entails basically uh, working on human rights issues with regard to fossil politics, which is the impact of oil extractive activities in the Niger Delta, and mining generally in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. I work also on hunger politics, which includes issues about safety, issues of genetic engineering, issues of displacement of farmers, and destruction of local food systems. Uh, the, the, basic, the question we asked in terms of our work on food is, why are people hungry? And we found that people are not hungry because there's no food. It's basically because they don't have access to the food. People are hungry also because, not because they don't farm, but because their farming systems are being challenged and destroyed by you know, chemical industries and genetic engineering and all kinds of things that closes the space for people to work closely with nature and brings farmers who usually work with nature, bring them in conflict with nature. And this affects local economies, and local subsistence, and also availability of nutritious and safe food. So these are the things that uh, occupy most of my time. Uh, the platform of human rights activism focused on environmental justice issues. The Nigerian environmental movement actually started mostly on the conservation platform about the environmental groups uh, who work to preserve forests, the grasslands, and certain species. Uh, but from the early, from late 1980s and early 1990s, uh, we began to see a shift towards environmental justice, mostly because uh, people live very closely with the environment. And so if you destroy the, you destroy the environment, they're destroying their means of livelihood. You are destroying the quality of their life. You're destroying culture. You are breaking the social cohesion and creating conflict. So we find a situation where, especially transnational corporations, go into communities with a lot of promises. We're going to bring you a better life, investments, job creation, and all that. But the reality has been that many of these jobs operate as enclave economies. They, they don't really employ local people, even where their skills are available. Uh, and a lot of the investment to back up this sector uh, carried out externally. Uh, so the, there's no backward integration with the communities. Uh, so people feel more alienated. So you, you're having very serious pollution issues, especially with regard to mining. And that is, when I say mining, I mean both solid mineral mining and petroleum resource mining, oil and gas. Yes, so the environmental movement has, while we still have the conservation movement, is moving more in the direction of environmental justice, with environmentalists acting closely with communities to defend the environment, defend their resources, and also to bring up the idea, the, bring up local knowledge, um, to show the fact that you don't have to exploit nature in terms of transformation or degradation in order to benefit from what nature has to give us, but rather that people working with nature can actually enhance their economy, local economies, and preserve what they have for future generations. Uh, but when, when you look at what the oil industry has done to the Niger Delta, it's totally unconscionable. It's totally something that shouldn't happen to anybody anywhere in the world. You have situations where water bodies are routinely polluted, and people drink from those rivers and creeks. So people sometimes are forced to drink uh, clearly polluted water because they don't have the alternatives. Uh, now you have also pollution of the soil. In places like Ogoni, from the United Nations Environment Program, a report published in 2011, some places the soil is polluted to a depth of five meters. Now that is incredible. Now you just imagine how long it will take to, re to restore that. And so the struggle is about survival. The struggle is about protecting not just the environment, but everything that relates to the environment, and that is the totality of life. Life expectancy in Nigeria has been so severely reduced. It's about 41 years. It's the lowest anywhere in the country. So, so we have the movement of people working, communities and individuals working on that. We also have a lot of work in terms of fighting desertification. 11 states in northern Nigeria are impacted by desertification. But 
the thing about desertification is that it's not just a question of the Sahara Desert marching southward, because if that were the case, the whole of Niger Republic, which is to the north of Nigeria, will be covered by sand. Uh, so the part of it is about how people relate to the environment and the struggle for access to environmental resources, uh, which needs to be managed and, and working with the people. So, so we have we have this, we have communities working to maintain their forests, high forest. We have very little of rainforest left, and the ones left are best protected by local communities who know when to, what resources to take, and how to manage and sustain what they have available. And we've got a lot of challenges, also, a, especially from external influences, uh, because the challenge on the forest about getting the timber, not just for local use, for, for export. And then on the, on the food front, we're having very big assault on the food on food safety issues in Nigeria. And this picture, if Nigeria is polluted, it has big implication for Africa. And, and so the genetic engineering proponents, the big transnational corporations putting genetically engineered seeds and, and related chemicals, uh, the herbicides and the pesticides, are now pushing very strongly. And Nigeria has a very weak health safety law was signed in uh, early 2015 into law, just before a previous government left office. Uh, and so you have an agency that is ready to permit almost everything. With less than a year into existence, they already permitted Monsanto, which is a very notorious American genetic engineering company, about to be bought by Bayer in Germany, uh, bringing in, having a permit to bring genetic engineering cotton, engineered cotton the same variety of cotton that collapsed and failed in Burkina Faso, which is a neighbor to Nigeria. Uh, farmers lost a lot of money and they had the government had to stop the planting of Monsanto's uh, genetic engineered cotton. But Nigeria is believing, or they are, that's what they claim, that it would not happen here. Why wouldn't it happen in Nigeria? Just a way of destroying local production. And here you hear the Nigerian president saying that he's looking forward to having Nigeria again a net exporter of food. But if we have our food system genetically engineered and contaminated, the, cap the, the space to export will be totally shut down. Except they want to export to the United States, which is highly contaminated already. But again, that would not be an easy thing because they, they already have the same thing you are trying to produce here. Genetic engineering, engineered corn, uh, is also being brought in by Monsanto and an agency of government. Now we have the serious issue of um, also local staples being genetic, genetically engineered with the approval of an agency that ought to protect about safety. Issues like cassava, uh, which is being tested at the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture in Ibadan, Nigeria. Uh, we have issue of uh, beans. You know, when they call it cow, people don't know that this is beans. Uh, because <laughs> the normal name is for so, so you use a technical term to confuse the people. People say you are genetically engineering cow pee. Say, well, how, does, how does that bother me? I'm not a cow. I'm not going to be eating the cow pee. But it's beans. This is what we eat every day. Uh, this is what they make. This is a popular snack here called akara. It's fried by the roadside. Fine roadside vendors making it right there. Exactly. So even if you say, well, we're going to label the food that are genetically engineered, it will not work in Nigeria or most parts of Africa. Because you cannot genetically, you cannot label the corn that's been roasted by the roadside, or the akara that's been fried by the roadside, or the gari that gari from cassava that's sold by the roadside. So we have this serious pressure in terms of the food politics because it's about transnational cooperation and external influence trying to, to take control, to colonize local food systems. So this is the trajectory of environmental movement in Nigeria. It's more about justice, about uh, protecting local system, about fighting for the future. Because what we're facing are intergenerational crimes on the continent. That's